It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So when he said, and you are Peter, what he was saying, the Lord said to me, he said, when you understand who Christ is Good. and when you acknowledge yes. who Christ is, you declare that he is your Lord. He is the anointed one. He is Christ, the Messiah. And when you confess who Jesus is, that he is your Lord and Savior, then Jesus turns around and says, now let me tell you <laughs> who you are. And so you will see yourself in Christ and a new identity that you're not who your mama made you. You're not who mistakes made you. You're not who problems made you. You have a, no, a new identity in Christ. You're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Everything has become new. So knowing who you are in Christ, it's not just some sort of a little mental or intellectual thing. This changes everything in your life. Old things pass away. Everything has become new. One time I was looking at that and, and I said, <laughs> when Jesus was raised from the dead, he didn't say, oh, I I sure help. I sure hope that helped you a little bit when you're having a, a blue Monday or you're feeling tired. He said, no, when, when Jesus was raised from the dead, he said, all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. <laughs> Wow, that's big. <laughs> yeah, so when God raised Christ from the dead, he released enough power, exceeding great power, to undo everything Satan had done in Adam and to make man a new creation, a new heart, and a new spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus came with a purpose to destroy yeah. the works of the devil, mm -hmm. which started in the garden. Yeah. You know, deceiving and stealing, killing, um, hatred, all of that. Yeah. Jesus came with that express purpose. Mm. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest yeah. that he may destroy the works well. of the devil. And when Jesus came, he, he tore out the old kingdom. He said, I am building a mm. new kingdom. Yeah. And he said there in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so Jesus is the builder. He's wow. an architect. He's a foundation. Mm. He's the cornerstone. He said, I'm building the church and it's on a revelation of me. Mm. The wow. church looks like me. <laughs> yeah. And it's on, uh, it's built upon the spirit of wisdom. Yeah. And revelation upon this, upon of this rock. Christ. Yes. I will build my church where the rock he's talking about is the revelation of who Christ is, but also you are a piece of that piece rock. Of rock. Or you have the same life, same authority, same nature that's in Christ is now in this believer or in every believer. So we're part of the building. Yeah. We're part of the church. Yeah. And the, the influence of the church and the purpose of the church, it says uh, in the Amplified, the powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it yeah. or be strong to its detriment. I like this, or hold out against it. Wow. So wherever you are, you might say, well, you know, I'm just a little member of the church. I'm a lady and I'm a housewife. I'm or serving or whatever. whatever. Yeah. No, you're, you're part of the church. Amen. And you know the name, you know who you are. You're a piece of Jesus. You're in him. Mm. And wherever you are, you can change uh, your family. Yeah. You can change your children, your your community. Mm. Right yeah. now in the world, it's crazy. Mm. All kinds of wow. things going on. But you can change it. You can be the light of the world. Yeah. You have a revelation that the same spirit that raised mm. Jesus from the dead is working in you. Yeah. And the words that you, wow. pr you speak and the prayers you pray are shaking things yeah. and are moving things. It changes the way you pray. Yes. Uh, and, and it changes the way you think. It affects your mind. It changes the way you talk. 
Jesus changes everything. He's a new creature in Christ. Old things pass away. Everything has. <laughs> in other words, uh, Jesus didn't come just to move in. He came to take over. He in other words, yes, he's coming to take over. In other words, when you yield to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then uh, he changes everything. He said, don't even remember the former things. I'm going to do a new thing in your life. So every time you're looking back, remembering former things, it kind of like waters down and hinders your faith from working effectively. Right. Amen. I like right. what Wigglesworth said. No, never look back never if look you want back. the power of God in your life. Don't look, look back. back to that which has been done away by the blood of Jesus and what happened in the resurrection of Christ. So while we're here in 2 Corinthians 12, Paul said an abundance of revelation said uh, a messenger of Satan was sent to attack me on every side. And you can see all the adversity Paul went through. But there's just some, another phrase here in 2 Corinthians 12 I want you to get before we move on. And it's in verse 1. Uh, Paul said, it's, uh, it is not expedient for me, doubtless the glory. He said, but I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Notice that. He said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. <laughs> in other words, Paul said, I'm still moving into visions and revelations of the Lord. And then he says in verse two, I knew a man in Christ. And then he says, I couldn't tell whether he's in the body or out of the body. Such a one was caught up into the third heaven. And I knew such a man caught up into paradise. And he said, and that's the one I will glory about. In other words, Paul said, my identity, he calls himself, I knew a man in Christ. So Paul is literally saying, I am a man in Christ. I knew a man in Christ, talking about himself. So what, what, what better phrase could you use to describe a believer and a believer with revelation than to say a believer is a man or a human in Christ, a new kind of human, a new kind of man, a man in Christ. A man <laughs> in Christ, a person. I love the phrase. In Christ. Yeah. Yes. So I knew a man in Christ. All right. And so Paul says, I was so caught up uh, spiritually. He said, I really couldn't tell whether I was in my body or out of my body. <laughs> he was <caught laughs> so the up. realm of the spirit is so real. And yet walking with Jesus and living in the spirit. And, and uh, even John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, mm -hmm. which means he kind of got into a realm of revelation where right. he's hearing and seeing and writing what he's hearing and seeing about eternity, about heaven, about the realm of glory. And so you can see uh, the spirit of wisdom and revelation is a real thing. It's a real thing and it's changing. It'll change even the moment by moment experience mm. that you're walking through day to day. Yeah. You know, you can sometimes be mm. overwhelmed, frustrated, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the presence of the Holy Spirit uh -huh. makes the reality of Christ. Yeah. He's in you. He's the hope of peace. He's the hope of your uh, answer for that moment. Hmm. He's, he is the source of self-control. Hmm. And the Holy Spirit reveals hmm. that it's Christ in you. Hmm. And you're not in this fight. You're not in the hmm. world. You're not, you know, in the natural. You're in Christ. So if we're in Him, we can do all things yeah. and all things are possible moment by moment. I just mm. take it home because sometimes you just got to mm. take it home. <laughs> yeah. This translates, like you say, to personal victory. Yeah. So what the Holy Spirit does. So now if you talk about several keys or accesses uh, to revelation knowledge, yeah. you'd have to just say the Holy Spirit. Number one. Number one. You have to say the Holy Spirit. Or you have to say, really, not number one. You have to say the Word of God, number one. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, number two. But the, whole, the, it all word, works is, together. the word is uh, inspired by yeah. the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit actually is the uh, author <laughs> of the Bible. He's the author of the uh, New Covenant. So he knows its meaning. Knows. So he the knows. Holy Spirit, Jesus said, He is the Spirit of truth. And when He comes... He will guide you in all truth. So my dad always said the Holy Spirit's a genius. If you listen to him, he'll make you look smart. If you ignore <laughs> him, you're going to be you're going to be whooped, beat up, messed up because the Holy Spirit actually is the one that takes what Christ has done for us and translate it into personal victory. 
Uh, the Holy Spirit is the one that takes everything that Christ has done for us and makes it real, a reality in our personal life or in our experience. Yes. So the Holy Spirit uh, lives on the inside of you. He's the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. So there's several keys to uh, going forward in revelation knowledge. All right, number one, we talked about yesterday a little bit, is how you receive the word. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. And the substance of faith is revelation knowledge. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How you hear, and we said yesterday that Jesus said, uh, be careful how you hear, because mm -hmm. whoever hears is the one that's going to have it. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you can't hear it, and so he said, pay attention, mm -hmm. listen mm -hmm. when the word is being taught or the word of God is being read or the word of God is being preached because what are you hearing? Because you can actually even hear more than the preacher's saying mm -hmm. because he'll, the Holy Spirit will bring that into application. Right. So how you receive the word of God, um, how you hear, that's where faith comes from. How do you hear? How do you hear? I like uh, David in Psalms, the fifth chapter. David was a man after God's own heart. And he had a revelation. Mm. He knew the secrets. And he knew there was more than the natural world. Mm -hmm. He had eyes that saw. And so uh, Psalm 5 says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken to the voice of my cry, my King mm -hmm. and my God. And then it says in verse 3 um, in the Amplified, In the morning you hear my voice, O Lord. So there he's positioning himself to hear God and for God to hear him. And in the morning, he says, I prepare a prayer, a sacrifice for you. How personal, how sweet. And then he said, and I watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. So right there, it's a, a divine mm. connection, a divine intimacy with God, yeah. which is such a, a heart thing, you know. Mm. So yeah. every morning, I think it's just a good habit, mm. and it is the habit of so many throughout the Word of God, yeah. to get up in the morning when you're fresh and listen and yeah. wait for Him mm. to speak to your heart. And when you do that, He gives you the keys. That's what Jesus' pattern mm. was. He got up way before everybody else a wow. lot of times, and He mm. heard the Father. Wow. Wow. And he got the direction, got the strength yeah. for this day and walked in that revelation. So how you hear in the morning can affect uh, how you hear all day long. All day long. And so making a priority to seek the Lord in the morning. And uh, my favorite psalm, well, I shouldn't say, but one of my favorite one psalms. One of your favorites, yes. Is uh, Psalm 63. Yep. But in Psalm 5, David said, my voice you will hear in the morning. And so he lift up his voice, fellowship with God. Psalm 63, mm -hmm. he would say, oh God, you are my God. Mm -hmm. I like that. Oh God, you are my God. You're not just uh, Abraham's God. Come on, you're not my just God. Elijah, Elisha's God. You're not just <laughs> Solomon's God or you're not just Moses' God. No, when he said, oh God. Now in our case, we would say, you're not just my daddy's God or my mama's God or the pastor's God or your TV preacher's God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek thee. Mm -hmm. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for mm. thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see your power and your glory so as I have seen you in the sanctuary, because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness in my mouth, shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and I meditate on thee in the night yeah. watches because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul follows hard after thee. Thy right hand upholds me, but they that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes, but the king shall rejoice 
rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. I call that praying through. <laughs> I love Psalm he 63. He prayed through to victory. And actually, if you study history, I love some, some things in history in World War II. That was Patton's mm. prayer yep. uh, in, in the invasion going in to stop the uh, Nazi Germany and to stop Hitler. And uh, that prayer, oh God, you're my God. In other words, we're going to conquer because you're my God. Now, he's a pretty rough guy if you study history, but he still believed and had <laughs> faith in God. Faith in and God. so that's David's Psalm. Oh God, you are my God. So there's really something about revelation knowledge that, that takes you out of the realm of just God's the almighty God. It is God, you are my God, you are my Father God. I cry, Abba, Father, you're my Daddy God, you're my Father God. You are the Father of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, and the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of me. I'm washed in the blood of Christ, the blood of God, the divine blood Amen. of the blood covenant, and you're my Father God, and you never leave me, you never forsake me. You never abandon me. So I boldly say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Think about the, <laughs> the, the faith and the boldness that David had, but he got that from a personal uh, revelation of God. And experience in the presence of God yeah. and opening his heart and finding the spirit dimension mm. that we are a spirit. God is a spirit. And God has made a way through Jesus, through his blood, yeah. for us to have access, yes. personal mm. visitation rooms wow. with God. Yeah. And get out of the natural and the impossible situations you might find yourself in, and you get into the realm where all things are mm. possible. Lamentation 341, I like this in the Amplified, I've always mm. liked this. Let us lift up our hearts. So when we pray with revelation, lifting up our hearts mm. and our hands. I like that. Mm. It's a demonstration where we're going and with, then with them, mount up in prayer to God in mm. heaven. So the spirit of wisdom and revelation will lift you. There's a lifting power out mm. of your situation into the very courtroom of God, wow. into the very face of God. Hmm. And that's where all things are possible. Yeah. You're having an encounter like you were talking, oh God, you are my God. Hmm. And you are doing Mark eleven twenty two. Yeah, have faith You're in God. You're taking the faith of God. Yeah. You're laying hold, taking yeah. hold of His Lay hold of God's faithfulness. In that communion, yeah. intimacy with God. And now your authority as yeah. a believer that you say to the mountain, the mountain represents anything that seems too big for you. Anything that looks impossible to move or to change. Anything that natural people say, that's always going to be that way. But as a believer, when your believing is equipped with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge Amen. of God, then mountains have to obey you. Mm. Jesus said the same thing yes. in Matthew 17 and verse 20. He said, it shall obey you. In other words, it's not just going to obey God, it's going to obey you because the authority you have in your voice. And so that authority belongs to every believer. Wow, when our time's running out for today, but look at Psalms 25 verse 14 one more time. One more time. Because we're talking about the Ephesians 1 prayer, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But I want to end up today on Psalms 25, verse 14. It says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. That could so, be our memory verse. The secret <laughs> of the Lord is with yes. them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Think about this covenant. Think about the blood covenant. Think about all that Jesus has done for each one of us. 
and that authority that's available to every believer, the power that raised Christ from the dead. He says, when you worship God and you say, God, you're my God. And you say, well, I've got too many problems or too many failures. Well, according to Hebrews 4, verse 16, he says that you come boldly to the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace to help in the time of need. That means when you're facing a challenge or even if you've, uh, I think the Amplified says we receive uh, mercy for our failures. So I kind of say it this way. You receive mercy for your failures and grace for your future. So he says, even though you may be facing a challenge or you may have failed, he said, you can still come boldly to the throne of grace. Well, how are you going to get in there boldly? He says, we come by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So think about that covenant through the blood of Jesus that God said, I will not remember your sins. Your iniquities, I will not remember anymore. In other words, God said, I've totally forgotten about your failures because of the power of the blood covenant. Think about that covenant. He said, and God said, if you'll fellowship with me, I'm going to show you the secrets of my covenant. What all is involved in that covenant and God's personal commitment to that covenant, his commitment to you as a believer that he is your God. You're my father, God. When you boldly confess that Jesus is Lord, I like what dad Hagen said, even in the face of every failure and challenge that you confess, Jesus is my Lord. He is my savior. He said, hold fast to that confession of faith that I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. I overcome Come by the blood of Jesus. I have access in the presence of the Almighty God, and I come boldly by the blood of Jesus, and I receive mercy, and I find grace to help me right on time. I like what uh, the Amplified says appropriate help, well timed help, right when you need it. But you come boldly by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I believe there's a divine encounter, an intimate uh, meeting Mm. with God where, as Isaiah 40 says, Mm. we wait upon him, he renews our strength, Mm. and he causes us to mount up with Mm. wings like eagles, move from the place we Uh were into the place where he is bringing us to in freedom, peace, health, yeah. Uh, calm, quietness, mm, yeah. and uh, assurance forever. Mm. Hallelujah. And this morning I was singing and humming another song, and it's Blessed Assurance. Mm. Jesus is mine. Yeah. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. This is my story. This is my mm. song. Praising my Savior all the day long. So I mm. think we can just take this teaching and just. Let it come out in praise. Mm. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. The greatest need of every believer is expressed in the prayers found in the chapters of Ephesians 1 and 3. Understand and experience the life-changing power in these prayers. Revelation from God fuse your dedication to God. In this new edition book by Pastor Mark Hankins, Revolutionary Revelation, Breaking Barriers, you will understand that every breakthrough in faith comes from a breakthrough in revelation knowledge. You don't need more power, you need more revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge unlocks the power of God and every breakthrough in receiving the blessings of God. We also want to offer you four brand new messages titled Revolutionary Revelation Breaking Barriers. These messages will help you understand the importance of revelation knowledge in your identity. When you have revelation from God, you will clearly see who you are in Christ. In these new teachings, you will understand what happened to Jesus in the death, burial, and resurrection, and how Jesus' victory becomes your victory. Get the book and CD set today. 
Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us to complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book and the four CD set, Revolutionary Revelation, Breaking Barriers. You can also download the MP3s of these messages in our app for free. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Hello, thank you so much for joining us for the program today. My name is Alicia Hankins Moran, and we're just honored that you chose to watch the message today, and we believe that you are blessed. We're super excited to give this offer to you today of Revolutionary Revelation, my dad's book and the CD series. For your gift of any amount, we will send this to you. You can also go on the app and download the messages for free. For more information, you can go to markhankins.org. Have a great day. For over five decades, our desire has been to teach foundational biblical truths to believers around the world. Now, like never before, we see an acceleration of that assignment and are determined to take the message of faith to as many nations possible, seeing lives, churches, and nations transformed by the Word of God. We've been to over 50 countries and have ministered the Word and the Holy Spirit in conferences, churches, and Bible schools. Some of these places we go to again and again, and the seed of the Word is still growing today. Our assignment is to distribute the Word on every avenue possible, broadcasting on TV, websites, social media, the app, and through publishing our books and CDs. We know if we do our part, God will do His part and make sure the Word lands at the right place at the right time. In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the Gospel. The stories of people receiving our books in remote places around the world fuels our vision to do what the Lord has called us to do. People are receiving our books deep in the heart of Africa, Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Iran, and Pakistan, and so many other places. Our books are currently translated in many languages and distributed in even more countries. Our vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different languages. Getting the written word in the hands of pastors and believers around the world is paramount to igniting the faith of generations to come. The books can go much further than we can. Partners, we ask you to continue to stand and believe with us that the Lord will continue to open the doors to new countries for our books to be distributed. Not only have we seen the faithfulness of God in the distribution of the books, but the television and media ministry has also accelerated as we recently launched out into daily television. We are now on the Victory Channel, BTN, and the Word Network and are reaching a potential of 150 million homes worldwide. We desire to continue distributing the word more efficiently. One way we are doing this is through building our brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us minister the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. We're also streaming our In Christ International Bible College around the world via Facebook and YouTube. This allows anyone in any country to catch the spirit of faith and study the word at their convenience. With the advances of modern technology, the supernatural acceleration, and the new open doors, we are reaching more people today than ever before. And that's because of you. It's because of our partners that we're able to accomplish the assignment God has for us. When everyone pulls together, we will see amazing things happen for the kingdom of God. We thank you for your continued partnership. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.